then if it continues raining, then you get a situation where the cool catch rate is saturated. But these processes are gradual processes. They are not sudden processes. They are not as sudden as a mid-level discharge. So this is the problem. The problem is that the catchment is not uh, behaving uniformly. It's behaving in different ways because hydrology is heterogeneous. So how to solve this? Then people had an idea, and the idea was why not considering the catchment, why not schematize it not as a unique bucket, but as the combination of several buckets? This is the idea. So to recognize heterogeneity of hydrological processes by using several buckets. And there are several methods for doing that. If you use several buckets, then of course, each one of them behaves differently. Even if you still adopt uniform rainfall in space, still these buckets can have different uh, behaviors. They behave differently and allow you to simulate, to better simulate the smooth changes, temporal changes in the island. is how can I do that by keeping the model simple because I just said that the model shouldn't become too complicated so how could I do that by keeping the model simple this is the question and of course people gave a lot of thought on that so there are several questions that should be answered which uh, which are how many how many buckets should I use what is the structure of this of these buckets should they be linear or not, etc. And then people had an idea which is uh, given by this scheme. The idea, first of all, is to make these buckets very simple. So not using a, a bucket with a bottom discharge, but just a bucket which overflows when it's full. So this is the first idea. So let's take a, a series of buckets, and let's assume that they just overflow when they are full. And then the only parameters which matters is the maximum storage for this bucket, buckets, which is variable. So let me make a sketch. Let's suppose that we have several buckets. Their storage, maximum storage, W, and here you have just the number of buckets. You have just the buckets here. So the catchment is simulated through a series of buckets with different storage. And as I said, they are just subjected to overflow when they are full. So what happens if it rains? And let's suppose that after one hour, I get this rain, P1. So if I get this rain, and I can show the rain over the y-axis because it's the same measure of unit, it's the same unit than, than W. So let me put here the rain, which is constant. Then you get the smaller buckets, 
are already overflowing. So you have this rain here, which is transformed in runoff. While you have these buckets, which get storage, so this is with the dots is storage and the area with the sloped lines is the runoff. So this is your new one. This is a very generic scheme because scheme because I didn't uh, I didn't uh, fix any value for the storage of these buckets. This is just a, a sketch to give the idea to you. It's a couple of minutes and then we stop. It's not very fault. It's my fault that I want to teach two hours. We could decide next time in the Zoom to, to stop to make the break every hour. Probably it's better. I didn't take this decision today because I have a council meeting of, of the master degree program at 12, so I can't stop, otherwise uh, I need to close the lecture to be in time for that. So sorry, because otherwise I wouldn't stop, because I understand that lecturing with this noise is not really a good thing. Next time, maybe that we decide to do that. Okay, so this is the idea. And then what happens in the second hour? So in the first hour, this is Q1. In the second hour, you have a rainfall like, let me, P2. And look, in this case, the rainfall is cumulative rainfall from the beginning of the event. So please notice that this change, in order to be able to draw this scheme, this P2 is uh, the cumulative rainfall from the beginning of the event. So I made a change of notation. And from now on, we will refer to P as cumulative rainfall. Okay. What happens at the end of the second hour? Okay, if the cumulative rainfall is P2, you get to this level where you have this slope higher, this area that I marked with the slope the lines, sloped in the other direction, which represents the increment in outflow between the first and the second hour. step at a certain time step you get to a situation where P, let's say P star, cumulative rainfall is equal to the maximum storage in the catchment. Let's call it W max. From this time on, all the rainfall is transformed into runoff. So from this time on, there is a, a change in the functioning of the model. But still, everything is very smooth. So you get saturation in the catchment smoothly.
and you may say, yeah, this is going to be very complicated. Because uh, you may also say, you may also notice a first reason of complication. And the first reason of complication is that you may say, you may think that we need to define storage for all these buckets, which means a lot of parameters. Because let's suppose that I adopt the uh, number of buckets equal to 20, and you have to define for each of them the storage, then it means 20 parameters. So you may think that this is too complicated. But still, there is, uh, um, there is a way, and the hydrologists found a way to describe this scheme very, with a simple relationship. And uh, let's, let's look at this sketch, basically. What I, what I am depicting here is uh, the progress of, uh, of the storage in each bucket, depending on the number of buckets. And basically, you could express this number of buckets as a percentage of the area covered in the catchment. So basically, each bucket, you may associate it to a catchment area, a sub-catchment area. So basically, if you think that you want to represent your catchment with 10 buckets, and uh, the catchment is 100 kilometers square wide, you may assume that each bucket represents 10 square kilometers. So basically, you may think that here, instead of the number of buckets, you, you may represent here the catchment area. And therefore, if I could identify a relationship, a simple relationship relating what? The storage in the catchment, depending on the catchment area, I could avoid to define so many parameters. If I could identify a parametric relationship with, let's say, one parameter describing this progress of uh, bucket storage with respect to catchment area, I would have expressed this relationship very simply. I mean, the, the first idea that you may have is, let's try to fit a parametric curve here. Do like this, something like this. And if I could uh, express this curve through an analytical relationship by means of parameters, a reduced number of parameters, I would avoid to define the storage for each of these buckets. If I just need this analytical relationship, but an analytical relationship should express the storage depending on something. And the something, the most brilliant idea, is to use the catchment area here. Because it's the same thing that to refer to the number of buckets. And people thought uh, not to really refer to the catchment area, but to the percentage of the catchment area. Because if you refer to the percentage, it's unique for every catchment. So basically, people thought to express this relationship in terms of storage of the catchment against versus percentage of the catchment area. So this uh, abscissa should vary not between 0 and area of the catchment, but between 0 and 1. You just need to divide the abscissa by the catchment area to obtain a relationship that is valid for every catchment. describing the storage depending on the percentage of catchment area I have done. And then people proposed several relationships. And I am introducing you just one, just one model, because it's a model that became very popular for its simplicity. You will see that it's simple. The code for applying it in R is just like 20 instructions or 25, not many. It stays in one page. We will use it tomorrow. And uh, it was fine, uh, quite efficient with five parameters. So this is the model which I'm introducing that was devised in 2000, in the year 2000. 
and, and therefore just 15 years ago, let's say it was published in 2000, so maybe it was devised in 98. And this is not surprising because hydrological models basically were, apart from uh, the linear models, they were introduced in 1930, which is anyway less than 100 years ago. But uh, the more complicated models, those who couldn't be analytically integrated, were all devised starting from the 70s. Because before then, <coughs> they didn't have any PC available, or only a few people had PC available. And in any case, the PC were, their power was not comparable with the power of modern PCs. Okay, So let me introduce this model then. And in order to introduce this model, as I said, I need to give an analytical relationship for this car. And let me express it by making a change of, uh, of ax. Because, uh, you know, I want to express uh, as uh, dependent variable the I'm thinking to my slides where I put the, I think, yeah, I put it in the y-axis. Okay, so let me, yes, let me put the catchment storage here. The catchment storage varies from zero to the maximum storage in the catchment. We can certainly identify the point in the catchment, which is just one point, which has the maximum storage. And let's call it W max. Or let me call it, sorry, I need to change the variable because, because uh, I will explain you later, okay, why I need to change the variable now, but let me call it C and not W. And uh, I will explain you in a while. Let me now say that this is, uh, this variable is the storage in each bucket, okay? So you have a max, which is the maximum storage in the catchment. And uh, here on uh, the y axis, let me put a function called fc, which depends on c. c is uh, this uh, bearing storage in the catchment. And this function varies from 0 to 1, because it's the percentage of the area of the catchment that has a storage which is lower or equal than the given one. So let me make an example. Let's suppose that I get a storage C star. And then let's suppose that to this storage C star, I can identify a point in this graph to which I get a FC of 0.4. What does this mean? It means that 40% of the catchment as a storage that is lower or equal than C star. This is the location that I will use. It is extremely important in order to understand this lecture from now on that you get a clear perception of the meaning of the variables. And uh, I, I, I know that this is difficult online. So once that one look, looks at the lectures, it, it's uh, easier. And I have the slides for all this development. So I didn't use the projector because I prefer, when the situation becomes more complicated, I prefer to write on the blackboard. But if you download the slides, you find everything, hopefully with the same symbols. So, you know, I hope I remember well, but I, I think so, OK? So basically, again, Keep in mind that I now using the letter C to identify this storage, which is variable along the catchment, which is the maximum storage of each area of the catchment, storage of water. 
And therefore, I can identify a maximum value, which is the point that has the highest infiltration capacity, the highest water storage capacity. And I can identify for each C value from 0 to C max, which is the maximum value, I can identify a percentage. What is this percentage? Again, we have to clarify this. It's uh, the percentage of area of the catchment that has a lower or equal storage capacity than a given C star. OK, good. The other thing that I know is that if you have C equal to C max, then on this graph, you have to correspond to this point a percentage of 1. Because of course, if you take C max, you have 100% of the catchment that has a storage lower or equal to C max. So of course, you, you start, you get to C max in correspondence of 1. Look, this curve, because now I have to draw a curve here, because I said before that I have to find an analytical relationship for this curve, which means that now I have to find a, to draw a curve here and uh, provide an analytical relationship for it. This curve could also start not necessarily from zero, it could start also from here, which means uh, if it starts from here, like from 0.3, it means that 30% of the catchment has, an, has a water storage that is lower or equal than zero. Given that it can't be lower than zero, the storage is a positive value, it means that 30% of the catchment has a storage of zero, which means that it's impervious. It could be if you have rocks, if you have a paved catchment, it could be impervious, and then your car could start, could start also from here. No problem. It could also start from here. No problem. It means, if it starts from here, that 0% of the catchment, so no area in the catchment, has a storage capacity lower or equal than this given value. It's possible. Let's suppose that you have the catchment that has a finite infiltration potential. And every area, you have no paved areas, every area has a minimum infiltration capacity, a minimum storage capacity, then you start from here. No problem. But in order to make our life simple, let's assume that we start from here, okay? Because, you know, it's almost impossible that you have, you don't have any paved area, so it's unlikely that you can start from the x-axis, because, you know, at least a sidewalk, something, there is in the catchment. At least a, a boulder, there is something. So it's really unlikely that you can start from here. And let's assume it's likely that you can start from here, because if you have paved areas, then you can start from the y-axis. But let's assume that we start from here, to make the analytical relationship simple. So one first idea could be, let me use a linear one. This is very simple. But still, it's not really reliable because, you know, it's not really credible that you have a linear relationship. Let's say that the ideal case would be a more general relationship, a more general relationship which can become linear as a special case. The linear relationship would imply only one parameter, C max. Which is nice, but still, it's not really flexible. Please. Excuse me, but I didn't understand what is C and what is the function that you're talking about. The function describes uh, the progress of uh, the water storage in the catchment. So basically, you look at the catchment, and let's suppose that you discretize it. Okay, 
And let's suppose that you are able to give to each of these cells a value of the water storage. So you may have like one year, one year, one year, one year, one year, and one year, and then two, 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 and then three, 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 and then four, 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 four. Okay, good. And let's suppose that all these cells have the same area. Then you count the number of ones. They are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one is seven. I'm just explaining how you could, could, could draw this card, okay? So let's count the two. One, two, that's it. Two, we have two. Okay, let's count the three. Three is one, two, three, four, five, six, six. And then you have the fourth. The fourths are one, two, three, four, five. Five. Okay, what is the total number? Six, twelve, fourteen, and nineteen. So the total number is nineteen. Okay, now let me I delete this, okay, because it's already clear. I hope. Now let's count in percentage terms the number of ones. So in percentage terms, this is one third, let's say, no? So let me say that this is one zero point thirty-four. The percentage of two is about twenty percent, so it's about uh, zero point twelve. The percentage of three is again zero point thirty-four, and the percentage of uh, of uh, four is sixty-eight. Uh, 0.2. Okay, now let me put it in a graph. So, basically, you have to put here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and here the cumulative percentage. So, let me start from 1 is 0.3, 4, and now 2. I have 0 0.12 plus 0 0.34 is 0.46. Okay, and then 3 is uh, 0.34 again, so it's uh, 0 0.8. And uh, should be, okay, it's not really scaled well, but it's something like this. And then, one. And this is the card. I'm not sure it is clear, but it's the progress over the catchment area represented here in percentage terms of the infiltration capacity. Water storage. I'm using as synonyms infiltration capacity in water storage. Okay. It's better to use water storage. It's clear now. Okay, now the problem is that, you know, if I had the, the spatially distributed information that I depicted before, then I could define this card in this way without using any parameter. So I could use information that I have. If I go over the catchment and I take samples and I measure the water storage, I could define the scarf without using any parameters, just information. But indeed, Usually, I don't have this spatially distributed information. So it's better to use, uh, to assume that the progress of the storage over the catch rate is given by an analytical curve, which I have to estimate by using the data. This is better because, you know, I don't need this detailed information. Now, my problem is still that I have to find an analytical relationship for that. And let me remind you that. If I used a linear one, I would have only one parameter, C max. Now let me define a more flexible, a more flexible relationship. And in this case, I get into this model, which I mentioned to you, which is called iMod. iMod is uh, a very ingenious name, acronym, which means hydrological model. Very simple, okay? So if it's simple to it's simple to remember. 
So I want is based on an, this analytical relationship. Fc is equal to 1 minus 1 minus c divided by c max to the power of theta. And then you may say, ah, this is very complicated. In, instead, this is a nice feature of this model. This is not a complicated relationship. It may be complicated to remember, but it, has, it is very simple to use. And uh, let me say why. I anticipate why it is very simple. First, it's simple because, as I will show you now in a moment, it's very flexible and allows you to get also the linear relationship, first. Second, it's easy to integrate. This is why it's simple. Now, I said that it's very flexible and it includes the linear relationship. Is it true? Okay, let's see what happens if you take beta, which is one parameter. So this relationship has two parameters, beta and C max, two. What happens if beta is equal to one? If beta is equal to one, beta equal one, then it implies that Fc is equal to one minus one plus C divided by C max. 1 and 1 go away, and then you get your linear relationship. Good. So here we can say that beta equal to 1 corresponds to this linear relationship. storage, which means that all the catchment has a storage of C minus. 
which is an interesting situation anyway, because it's a situation from which we started. When we started from the bucket model, the bucket model is something that assumes that the situation is homogeneously distributed over the catchment, which is fine. So beta equal to zero is still interesting. It's not really useful in practice, because we wanted this type of model for, uh, for getting uh, out from this situation of the bucket. So it's not very useful, but still, it's interesting. This means that from beta included between 0 and 1, you are in this triangle here. This is an example, for instance. subtracted to 1. So in general, you have something here that is varying 